don't know this, you're probably not saved. And if you're not saved and you know this, like you're shaming those who are saved. Amen. So the most known and the most popular psalm is in the whole Bible. I want you to go there tonight. If you know that, every, 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 I've, I've gone to visit people in prison and they know that. Amen. So again, God, people better know that. Amen. So glory to God. Glory to God. A lady called Dor Dorothy Traper. Uh, she was a famous American interior decorator, interior designer uh, 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 in the early 90s. She made a statement that I want to share with you tonight. And she simply said these words, too much of anything is the beginning of a mess. Too much of anything is the beginning of a mess. Now, I know exactly what she's talking about. I know where she's going with this. And I, I agree in, in many ways, too much of anything. You, you know, you, you, you've got to start a complete and utter mess. But tonight, amen, I want us to consider this on a spiritual level or a spiritual sense tonight. I want to use a very practical illustration tonight. And I want us to see tonight, amen, we, 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 we got, we got to, oh, there you go, you showed it. There you go. Uh, some, some of you, oh, I thought it was Psalms 82. All right, go ahead. But uh, there you go, amen. But uh, we, we, we want to look at something tonight, amen. I want to preach a sermon I've simply called Too Much Wool. We want God to speak to us, amen, tonight, amen about too much wool. Let's read our Psalms. I mean, we know this tonight, amen. And uh, again, many of you, you know, we read this in Sunday school, kids, etc. But again, uh, it never gets tired, never gets old, never gets bored, never gets irrelevant tonight, amen. Let's read. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, let me, in fact, let me change the... Um, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There's some things you can't read in other translations, by the way. Sorry, that, that's changing. He leads me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Too much wool. Father, tonight I thank you. Uh, for your church, your people, God, all you're doing in their lives, all you're doing, God, that, that they don't see, they don't really appreciate God, but you're the God of wonders, you're the God who cares, you're the God who provides, and I'm asking God tonight, uh, you would minister to the body of Christ that are here, God, you know what they're dealing with, you know what, what awaits them tomorrow, and God, I'm praying, God, tonight, they would know that you've already gone on ahead of them, Lord, uh, and prepared, and you've made a way of escape. Father, tonight, I'm praying, God, for victory. I'm praying, God, for encouragement. I'm praying, God, tonight, men and women leave here stirred, God, that if God be for them, who can be against them? We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Lord, we pray for anyone who's lost, backslidden, oh, God, tonight, they will come back home. They will give their lives to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, amen and amen to much war. I know some of you are wondering what I'll go on here. Don't you'll find out very, very soon. I want us to look first of all tonight, amen, at the shepherd, the sheep, and the wool. Not the good, the bad, and the ugly, but the shepherd, the sheep, and the wool. Now, tonight, every single one of us, hopefully, when I told you to turn to the most famous Psalms in the whole Bible, you went to Psalms 23. Because again, it is the the, the uh, you can say most well known, uh, most read, uh, most I mean, uh, 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 memorized, uh, quoted, uh, 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 written down, put in a plaque, decorated, and hang on the wall. Uh, 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 at Psalms, you can think about it in the whole Word of God. We know tonight that the author is none other than the sweet Psalmist David himself. Uh, but I would, I would, I, I wonder tonight, maybe tonight, just maybe, 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 just maybe, like Pastor Ernie would say tonight. Just maybe tonight, amen. Maybe you don't know tonight that Psalm 22, Psalms 23, and Psalms 24 tonight are connected. And they're actually known as the shepherd's psalm. And we look at 22, 23, and 24 tonight, amen. You see some very powerful truths, amen, about the 
king, shepherd, amen, our Lord Jesus Christ. If you read Psalms 22, Psalms 22, amen, it speaks about Christ as the good shepherd. Psalms 23 is Christ being the great shepherd. And Psalms 24 is Christ the chief shepherd. If you read Psalms 22, it speaks about, amen, the shepherd's cross. Psalms 23 speaks about the shepherd's crook. Psalms 24 speaks about, amen, the shepherd's crown. In Psalm 22, amen, we see him as the savior. In Psalm 23, we see him as the satisfier. And in Psalms 24, we see him as sovereign. In Psalms 22, we see the foundation. In Psalms 23, we see the manifestation. But in Psalms 24, we see the expectation. In Psalm 22, amen, he, amen, dies. In Psalms 23, he lives. And in Psalms 24, church, he comes again. That is our shepherd tonight, amen. That is the king of kings. That is the Lord of lords, amen. A pastor is simply an under shepherd. But we talk about the shepherd. We're talking about the chief shepherd. And his name is Jesus Christ. Now tonight, amen, our shepherd. If anything you need to know, you need to know this tonight. Our shepherd cares about our soul. Let me make it more personal tonight. The chief shepherd cares about you. He cares about your soul. And tonight, amen, whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, you have a soul. And that soul is on the constant attack and assault. That soul is constantly taking, amen, constant battering and barragement and assault and bombardment tonight, amen. And sometimes, amen, the bombardment and the assault that comes upon our soul, sadly tonight, church, it is self-afflicted. It's not just the devil assaulting us. It's not just people, amen, who, are, who have messed up souls assaulting us, amen. But sometimes, amen, we assault us. Sometimes, amen, we can be our worst own enemies. But the good news tonight, amen, in verse 3, the Bible tells us of our text, he, this is our shepherd, he restores my soul. Too much war. Now, I'm going to tell you why I call this sermon too much war. Uh, uh, Prince, can you get that picture of us, please, sir? Ladies and gentlemen of the Brothers House Family, I want to introduce you to a sheep called Shrek. That is actually his name, Shrek. See, the story goes with Shrek. Shrek is with the shepherd. Shrek is moving with the shepherd and the, and, 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 and the flock. But Shrek decides to go and do his own thing. And Shrek gets lost. In fact, he gets lost for six years. He's lost for six years, and you could say tonight, literally by a miracle, he's found, and when they find him, he's carrying six years' worth of wool. Can you say too much wool tonight? He's carrying six years' worth of wool tonight. He's carrying six times the amount of wool a sheep, a man, should have tonight. And if you don't even about sheep and, and shepherds, every year, sheep get sheared. Every year, sheep gets a haircut tonight, you could say it. And they get they, they remove the wool uh, from the body, man. This is why, man, old Shrek, he looks exactly like he has a, a looks right now in that picture, man. He is carrying him again six years uh, a worth of wool, uh, and it is actually amazing he survived. It, it's amazing that this sheep was found tonight. Uh, and I want you to think about tonight, man, how life uh, and how this this you could say this this sheep's life uh, has been affected by all this wool that's weighing him down. All this wool that he's carrying, all this wool, amen, that, that you can say is upon his life. Think about for six years how this wool has affected old Shrek. Since the night, church, the wool that we wear spiritually can weigh us down tonight, amen, if we let things get to us too much. There are some things weighed down upon our minds. There's some things weighed down upon our hearts. There's some things weighed down upon our lives tonight, amen. And Jesus warns us of difficult times that lay ahead tonight. And he tells us to live a life of constant state of readiness. So you and I are not seduced by this world. We are told in Luke 21, 34, but take heed to yourselves. Let your heart be weighed down. Why or how or with what? with corrosing drunkenness and the cares of this life, that that day, that, that day, speaking about the day when he returns, that that day, amen, come upon you unexpectedly. Tonight, I want to tell you right now, difficult times, uh, during difficult times, uh, it's very easy for you and I to give up uh, and start living like the unsaved world. 
it's very easy for you and I to just throw in the towel and begin to be like the people around us. We can have an attitude that when in Rome, we have to be or do as the Romans do. But tonight, you may be in Rome, but you are not of Rome tonight. You may be in the world, but you're not of the world tonight. God's people need to remind it time after time after time again that we are sojourners, church. That we are simply passing through this world. We are simply passing through this life. That it is not our home tonight, amen. And church, if you and I are not careful, the cares of this life, the cares of this world will build and build and build. And it will begin to create the weight that will do some damaging things in your life and my life tonight. Just like, amen, our brother, Shrek, before that wolf. So let's look at tonight, amen, when things, or when they, you can say when there's too much wool. When there's too much wool on a sheep, and I am talking to you tonight, amen, because if there's any animal we are likened to a sheep, I know you think you're lying, but that place is already taken by Jesus. Amen. You are sheep, whether you like it or not. I am a sheep, whether I like it or not. Amen. And, and we need to understand, amen, when, the, when, when, when you and I accumulate too much wool, it's a very dangerous, dangerous thing to our spiritual health and lives. So what happens tonight when we, when there's, you can say, when there's too much wool? Number one tonight, when there's too much wool tonight, you can become cast down. Listen to David in Psalm 42, verse 5. He says, why are you cast down, my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? David is addressing his soul. David is addressing himself, his real, his real self. Not him and his body, not his spirit, but his soul. And he begins to say, why are you cast down, oh, my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Tonight, again, the Bible likens us to sheep tonight. And sheep can get into all kinds of predicaments and situations, amen, where they begin to fall over them, when they begin to trip over themselves, and they simply cannot get back up to where they need to be. And because of this tonight, church, this is where they need the care of the shepherd. Because what we need to see tonight, amen, when the sheep falls on the ground, it's very, very difficult, near enough impossible, for that sheep to get back up again without the assistance of of the shepherd. And what happens when they, you and I get into certain states, amen, uh, we can begin to panic, uh, amen, we are, we are consumed, amen, we fear out, our minds, amen, are, are clouded, uh, amen, and here's the sheep, uh, when a sheep falls to the ground, uh, amen, it begins to panic, uh, its stomachs begins to fill with certain kind of acids, uh, amen, it begins to work in the sheep, uh, and all these gases begin to build up in the sheep, uh, and it ends up suffocating the dead, all because of too much wool. See, when they get cast down tonight, normal life is hindered. For six years, this wool accumulated. And here is this sheep called Shrek. It can't see. For six years, it's blinded, you could say. For six years, amen, this sheep, amen, cannot walk, amen, and normal life, amen, was hindered all because he had too much weight on him. Tonight, I want to tell you there is a devil tonight, uh, and that devil wants us to get to a place uh, where we have so much hanging on us, uh, where we have so much baggage on us, uh, where we have so much issues on us tonight, amen, uh, that you and I cannot see, you and I cannot walk, you and I cannot progress tonight, uh, and ultimately tonight, our progress in Christ uh, is hindered. Ultimately tonight, amen, anything you and I want to do for God is hindered because we're carrying too much weight, we're carrying too much issues, we're carrying too much problems tonight and we become cast down, we become dejected and become low. See tonight, what the devil ultimately wants tonight, amen, he wants your progress stopped. In verse 3, David says, he leads me down paths, plural, of righteousness. He leads me down paths of righteousness. This is talking about, amen, forward motion. This is talking about, amen, uh, uh, about progress. This is talking, amen, uh, about moving, uh, amen, forward tonight. Uh, and what happens is this, amen, a shepherd will come 
and shepherds, amen, they are moving through pastures, green fields, uh, amen, and they'll, they'll, they'll stop at certain places uh, so the sheep can be replenished, so the sheep can be rested, uh, amen, so the sheep has enough uh, uh, strength to continue uh, the journey ahead. Uh, and as they, uh, as they stop, uh, amen, uh, uh, and, and the sheep is replenished, they move on again, uh, and the shepherd uh, and the flock are constantly moving. There is, there is no stagnation. There is no, amen, let's just set up camp and let's just stay here. You know, uh, they, 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 they're going somewhere because the shepherd has a destination for the sheep. The shepherd, amen, has a place tonight, amen. He knows that will benefit uh, and bless the sheep tonight. Uh, but, amen, a journey, amen, must, be, must take place. Uh, people must rise up uh, and begin to move forward uh, and allow the shepherd, amen, to lead them. Uh, and what's powerful about this tonight, amen, is a good shepherd doesn't just lead tonight, amen. A good shepherd will always walk the path ahead of them. Uh, so, amen, he never leads them to a place that he has not been himself. I thank God tonight that we serve a savior, we serve a shepherd tonight, man, that would not lead us down a path that he hasn't been himself. He would not lead us down a road tonight, amen, uh, that he has not gone down, amen, uh, and seen himself. Tonight, we serve a God uh, who knows the future. He knows the past. In fact, I like what Job says, uh, where he says, he knows the way I take, uh, and when he has tested me, uh, I shall come forth as gold. Here is Job. He has suffered loss. Uh, here is Job. He has suffered loss of riches. Uh, he has suffered loss of loved ones. Uh, church, Jesus suffered loss of riches. He suffered loss of loved ones. Uh, and tonight, amen, he had gone down that road. Uh, he had gone down that path. Uh, and that gave Job the confidence that God knows where I'm going. And I know at the end of this, I'm going to be rich. At the end of this, I'm going to be more valuable than I am right now. At the end of this, I'm going to be more blessed than I am right now. And church, when we follow him tonight, amen, you need to understand he will not lead us tonight to where he has not been at all. See, so the shepherd always wants the sheep to be moving forward. The shepherd tonight always wants you and I meant to be aiming forward. And the rest that he gives us tonight is so that you and I can continue to move forward tonight. It was Christopher Columbus, the man who discovered America. They say that he kept a diary. And in this diary, in, in, in this journal uh, that Christopher Columbus uh, kept, amen, when sailing uh, to America, to find America, he would say there, was, there are good days, uh, and, and, and there are bad days. There are days where things were going my way, and there were days where things were not going uh, uh, my way tonight. Uh, and he said there were many good days, and there were many bad days, amen, tonight. Uh, but he says, amen, there was one thing that he constantly wrote in his diary every single day. He, every single day he would write in his diary, today we sailed on. Regardless of whether we're good or bad, today we sailed on. There's nothing major happening. You can say there's nothing big happening tonight, amen. But here is a man that's saying, amen, I'm going to continue to move forward tonight. I'm not going to allow anything to hinder my progress. I, I, I'm not going to just go to stop because I believe what God has for me is ahead of me. Tonight, church, amen, there are some good days and there's some bad days tonight. But I believe in every single mind of the child of God tonight, there has to be something in us that, amen, that recalls in our minds today, I'm sailing on. Today, I'm moving forward tonight. And I'll let you know right now, it is worth it when we continue to go forward in Christ, when we continue to go forward in God. If Christopher Columbus could be here, he would tell you it was worth it for him to continue to go forward. Do you know why? Because he discovered a new nation. He discovered a new land. He discovered a new country tonight. Tonight, church, if you and I will continue to go forward tonight, we are going to discover a new country tonight. That country is called heaven tonight. The Bible talks about a new heaven, a new Jerusalem, a new earth tonight. Amen. If you would just go forward tonight, you too, amen, will make great discovery. Number two tonight, amen. You collect debris in your wool. Too much wool on a sheep is a haven for disease. It's a haven for parasites infections. In fact, hidden wounds are easily concealed because of too much wool. And let's not forget tonight, my favorite tonight, flies. Flies are annoying. Flies are a nuisance. I'm good to go for any flies tonight. I hate these things with a 
distraction. Here you are, you're trying to sit down, you're trying to drink your tea or your coffee or have a conversation with them. They, they're the most demonic, no wonder they call bells above tonight. They're devils tonight. And here's these flies, and then they can come and they sit on the wound and they lay their eggs and just do their other nastiness. I mean, on the sheep tonight, amen. And what I want you to see tonight, all these things I've named tonight, these are things of the world that weigh us down on our womb. Things come and they come and sit on us. Things come and they come and annoy us. Things come and they try to infect us. Things come and they want to poison us. Things come and they want to trip us over tonight. And they sit and, and, and the more the more wool you have, man, the more opportunity for them to come. But here's the thing tonight, amen. We just get rid of the wool. If we just rid ourselves, you can see, of that wool. Hebrews 12.1. The writer says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besnares us. Tonight, what the writer of the Hebrews wants us to see tonight is that there is a weight you and I must consider tonight. Tonight, what is the weight tonight that you and I should remove so you and I can win the race? We're involved in a race. The Bible speaks of our Christian walk as a race. And I've never seen anybody winning a race holding hands, running together. You've got to break for the finish line. And if you go on the things as well, again, if you're going to win a race tonight, again, I've never seen somebody win a race, especially a, 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 a you could say, a professional athletic meet tonight with a track suit still on. You shed it off when it's time to run. Because you don't want anything hindering you. You don't want anything slowing you down. You don't want anything getting in your way tonight. And what you and I need to understand tonight, church, is that everything that hinders our progress must be shed off. And when I say everything, I mean everything tonight. Everything tonight that will stop you and I crossing the finish line must be shed off tonight. And the reality is there might be even good things in the eyes of other people. There might be good things in your eyes. See, the writer separates weight and sin. Sometimes tonight, church, weights tonight, they aren't, they, they're not sins. But we have to get rid of them tonight if they weigh us for entering what God wants us to enter tonight. God says, I want you to deal with the sins. Get rid of the sins tonight. But you need to watch out for the weights. Consider the weights tonight. See, sometimes, church, we get burdened down. And the devil wants things, the things of this world to start collecting on us. He wants the things of this world to start getting on us. Uh, and he begins to attack us and then to hinder our progress tonight. But there is hope through our shepherd tonight. Then tonight, amen, you will see the cruelty of the enemy. Whenever you become cast down and weighed down by the wool of the sheep tonight, what happens? You become slow. Whenever there is too much wool on your body, my sheep, tonight, you become lazy. And when you become lazy, you become easy pickings for the enemy. I'll say for you tonight, amen. See, in Bible times, other animals were the enemy of the sheep. Wolves, bears, lions. When we were in America and we were walking around the, um, this place in California, there was this sign. This is, uh, 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 I think it was Beware. Uh, this is where we have the big Hollywood sign. I think it was, if I remember right, it said Beware of, of, of mountain lions. But I don't need to see any, anything more. I'm going home, right? I turn around just like. <laughs> It's no <laughs> big tourists everywhere. You know, beware of mountain lion. Before you kind of move those lions away out of the lake, you know. But you know, here's this. Here's here are wolves tonight. So here are lions tonight. I mean, they are known enemies of the sheep, but also I mean, they are vultures tonight. And here's the thing tonight: the shepherd 
was there to protect the sheep. But sometimes tonight, amen, the shepherd cannot protect all the sheep. Especially when some decide to wander off. That becomes a problem. They decide to wander off to do their own thing. Because tonight, here's this sheep. His name is Shrek, as we name him. He's lazy. He's weighed down with wool. And what happened, because he's, 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 he's got this wool, he slowly wanders away. And as he wanders away, he comes to a place where the wool is just, because he kind of just kind of do his own thing. Where he comes to a place where he's no longer wandering, where he's no longer moving, he stops. And whenever a sheep has too much wool and stop and he cannot go forward, he becomes simply one, he's no longer a sheep now, he's now dinner. He's going to be consumed. He's going to be destroyed by the enemy. It's interesting tonight, they say vultures. A friend of says, vultures never bother sheep that is making noise and moving forward. Whenever sheep are making noise and going forward, vultures, I better leave that alone. But the moment it sees the sheep just going to go forward again. I'm going to spectate. I'm going to pray. I'll just do my own thing. That vulture is licking, if I can use this word, its beaks. They say also with Pregnant ewes, these are female sheep tonight. When they're carrying lambs and they're weighed down with all the wool upon them, with all these things attached to them, they are also easy targets for the enemy. And what we need to see tonight, church, is not only tonight when the pregnant ewe has uh, all this wool on her and it's not been sheared off and she kind of wanders off tonight, not only is her life in danger tonight, amen, her baby's life is in danger. The bottom line is this tonight, church. I'll say it again tonight. It's not about us. It's not about us tonight. What you and I do, how we live our lives, it's so important tonight because we have legacy. We have children. We have spiritual children tonight, amen, that are, that are, that are, that are attached to us. We begin to make decisions and choices, amen, where we are no longer going forward. And we're now we're just still and not in God tonight, but still in our sin sit in ourselves tonight. Consequences can be very hard. See tonight, church, there is a cruel enemy. And if we don't have babies as a church, and when God gives them to, the, uh, give them to us, we don't nurture them tonight. Not just about you and me. I want to close with a little bit of the care of the shepherd. Verse 5, David says these words, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now that word table is not the table that you and I have when we sit down. That's not what it's talking about. That word table literally means tonight, it means a parcel of ground. And what happens is the shepherd will go and he will look for a parcel of ground where the sheep could come in, relax and sleep and eat and, and be nurtured, be looked after. When he goes to look for this parcel of ground, he, he goes through the ground and he begins to check for snakes. He begins to look at plants that are maybe poisonous the sheep uh, could, could consume and hurt itself. And when he's finished checking everything and everything's safe and everything's well, finally he begins to bring the sheep and what's powerful about this, he calls the sheep by name. A shepherd knows, I've showed this before, a shepherd knows every name of the sheep. He can have hundreds of sheep, he, he has named all of them. And he calls them, and they will come. It's not like he calls Tony, and all, and all five run. No, 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 no. Tony comes. It's not like he calls Sarah, and you know, all six of them come. No, Sarah comes. He has named, listen to me, God knows all our names in that church. He knows all of us. And when he calls us tonight, we know tonight that we have been called by the shepherd tonight. But here's the thing that I want to do tonight. 
he finds this he finds this this parcel of ground is big enough for all the sheep tonight he checks it again for again for all these things and he goes for this, this rigorous trek because the only time sheep would lie down and rest is when a sheep knew it was going to be safe. Now, tonight, I'm saying that to say this tonight. Imagine Shrek for six years. Six years, this sheep is in a cave. Six years, I'm sure this sheep was anxious. Six years, I'm sure this sheep was uncertain. Six years, I mean, this sheep was unprotected. Listen to me, this sheep would normally lie down in green pastures, but now is living in a cave. You can say tonight, I mean, now is living an abnormal life. Listen, this is why it's amazing to survive. This is why, I mean, it's amazing it was found. Because as far as they were concerned, this thing's dead. It's over for it. There's no way it would have been alive. No way it would have made it tonight. But for six years, it's tormented, you can imagine. Sleepless nights, panicking, fearful uncertain of tomorrow. Then he was found by the shepherds. Listen to me, every year, shepherds would share a sheep. Every year, without fail, because they knew that, 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 that this, this, this wall could get out of control. So every year, we're going to share this sheep. But what I want you to see this tonight is this. For six years, six years, all this wool just built up. All these things built up. All this, all this issue built up. All this fear built up. And what took six years to build up? In 30 minutes, it was gone. Because what happens is that when he found Shrek, the shepherd took him and straight away began to share him. And it took half an hour, 30 minutes to share the sheep, to, to take off all that wool. And if you've ever seen a sheep being shared before, it looks painful. It looks like you're hurting the sheep. It looks like, amen, that you're, you're, you're actually, this is animal cruelty tonight, amen. But let me, let me tell you something tonight, amen. The sheep is not hurt at all. Amen. The sheep is in absolute no pain at all because the shepherd knows how to hold down the sheep. The shepherd knows how to share the sheep. And here it is tonight. The sheep is also submissive to the shepherd. The sheep is not jumping around. The sheep is not blah, blah, screaming around. Amen. The sheep is completely submitted to the shepherd. So here's the thing tonight, church. Here's a sheep tonight that just sits and is relaxed and it's been shared and it's cool and it's not moving, it's not shaking, it's not resisting, it's not fighting, it's not kicking a fuss, it's not murmuring, it's not slandering, it's not cussing off the place. You know why tonight? Does this sheep understand something that I'm in good hands? Listen to me tonight, church. What the devil has taken years to build on you. What the devil has put upon you time after time, week after week, month after month. What, amen, you have accumulated, amen, again, because of maybe uh, you, amen, leaning to your own understanding, you being disobedient tonight, amen, uh, uh, what, amen, has weighed you down, amen, in a moment, in one prayer tonight at the altar, can be removed. Gone. It's amazing to me that God took 20 years of my sin away in less than one minute. 20 years of madness gone. Just like that. I want to tell you right now, I mean, the blood of Jesus has not lost its power tonight. That when we come to this altar and begin to speak to our shepherd and begin to renounce some things before our shepherd and begin to cry out to our shepherd and begin to repent before our shepherd, I want to let you know right now, whatever has happened in your life in a moment, it can be gone. But can I encourage you when you come tonight, amen, uh, submit to him. When you come, when you come to men tonight, amen, uh, don't kick and don't fuss and don't fight. When you come tonight, amen, don't burn this, this and that, amen. You need to come with the confidence because you're coming into the one hand who cares about you more than anything, more than anything in the world. He's a good shepherd tonight, amen. He's a caring shepherd tonight and he's here to help you remove the wall. Let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes in this place tonight. Every head bow. Every eyes closed tonight. Oh, listen to me. You are in good hands tonight. 
because you're in the hands of a caring shepherd. He sees the things that must go. He sees the things that must be removed. And it's the powerful thing. He's the only one that can do it. You and I cannot save ourselves. Only God can save us. Just like the sheep. He can't share himself. He can't remove the issues. He can't remove the things that are burdening him down. Only a good shepherd tonight. Only a caring shepherd tonight. Only the master shepherd can can do so. Tonight, amen, under the sound of my voice. The Lord, our shepherd, is here. He's present tonight to show himself strong. He's present tonight for healing. He's present tonight for deliverance. He's present tonight to bring peace. He's present tonight to bring clarity. But the one thing, more than anything, he's present tonight to do is to save. And you're here tonight, amen, under the sound of my voice. You're not right with God. There is sin in your life, amen. Or maybe like Shrek, you have wandered away from the fold. You've gone to do your own thing and it is a miracle of God that you find yourself in the house of God tonight it is a miracle of God you find yourself amongst the brethren tonight that they are all listen to me for years you you've lived in a cave for years amen there's been anxiety and and there's been things that attach themselves to you for years amen the enemy has put things upon your mind and put things upon your psyche and place things upon your heart amen, for years amen tonight amen you've accumulated because of a amen distance from your savior amen of a pride and unbelief and fear and all manner of sins tonight amen i want to declare to you that in a moment in a moment all those things that took you a year two years three years five years 20 years to accumulate A simple prayer of repentance. So tonight, what the Lord wants is a humble heart tonight. When you humble yourself and come before God, and don't resist Him, and don't fight Him, and don't kick and fuss, and don't make excuses. And say, this is God save me. God is going to save you. God has made it so easy for us tonight. It is the grace of God strength was found. And it's the grace of God you shall be saved tonight. Very quickly, you're here tonight. You're not right with God. You say, Pastor, can you pray for me? I want to give my life to Christ. I'm not saved. I'm a backslid. I'm away from God tonight. I want to recommit my life. I want to come back home. That's you. We do want you tonight. Just lift your hand up and put it down tonight. If you don't see that, I mean, I see that hand. God bless you. Anybody else tonight? God loves you in this place. If there's one thing I can I, I cannot emphasize enough, I mean, there's a love God has for you. God loves you with an everlasting love. And the Bible tells us in Jeremiah, therefore, because of loving kindness, he has drawn you near. You haven't just walked in here. God has brought you here. Because he loves you. And he sees the things upon your life. There's some here, man, you don't realize them, but the wall is accumulating. It's accumulating. It's getting more and more and more. And it may look good for a period of time, and you may be able to handle it for a period of time, but soon you're going to end up with spiritual ashram. Blinded, stagnant, and stationary, unable to move, unable to progress. Thanks be to God, the good shepherd is here. And he will here to save you. Quickly join my sister tonight. If they're here, you're not right with God, or maybe you're backslid. You didn't lift your hand before, but you want to lift it up now. So here's my hand. Lift it up and put it down tonight. I see that hand. Anybody else? God loves you. He really does tonight. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Christ, God doesn't condemn you tonight. But the only way you get to Christ is when you repent of your sins. We're going to hold it very long tonight. We won't do things tonight. Very the last time I'm going to say this tonight. Join this honest, precious people tonight. You're here, you're not right with God. You're here, you're backslid. You want to get back to Christ. Maybe you're here, you're just religious. Playing God games. God's not here to play games. God's here to save people. Tonight, he wants to save you. Because he knows the end of the story. But also, he knows the end of the story with him. Friend, you better choose it with him tonight. Quickly, that's you. Unsaved, backslidden, religious. Final time to say this. Just lift your hand up. I put it down. Lift up, put it down. Amen. I want to see that hand quickly. Up and down. Amen. Hallelujah. Those who lift up your hands, look at me. 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 Amen. You mean it? Amen. Bless your sister. You mean it? Amen. I'm going to get my coffee. Come. I need two ladies tonight. 
Jesus.